So, are we live? I'm not sure. If anyone out there can see this, maybe just write something in the chat. Would be interesting if we are understandably loud and if you can hear voices and not just rain because it's raining really really much right now <laughs> okay nice. pretty cool okay <laughs> yeah, like usually we are late to our stream so it's strange to be a bit too early so Try to say something for audio right. check. Are we are we audible? How loud is the rain actually? <laughs> I redefine. Hi everyone. Hi Blue Fox. So what is this all going to be about now? We will talk a bit about shaders. So other than our videos, uh, our videos are quite advanced in regards to shaders. And this live stream will be rather basic. We will just get our hands on some really simple, really easy to do shaders just to get you started. So this will be a very practical talk. Yeah. Yes, Max, you are right. This is a very German stream starting three minutes early. <laughs> yep. Like the most German thing to do. Okay, so now that it's almost time to start a stream, we might as well start with a little demonstration about what we do with shaders. And if you think this is shameless self-advertising, this is shameless self-advertising, but it's also kind of useful in this context. So this is a bit of context. People who watch our devlog maybe know this footage already. Please just start it a bit and we yep. look around and ask ourselves, how many shaders have we put into this? <laughs> Count the shaders. We count the shaders if you want. Yeah, we, we did some counting and we can just talk about a few here. We so, made it a bit slow-mo so you can see it in its full glory. So... Hi. Hi, Nate. The, the first one that comes to my mind are these telegraphs, which have these wobbling effects. Right, uh, like these are this firewall telegraph. Basically just overlapping textures. Right above that there's this fire. This fire are shaded particles which can be a bit finicky but can make really nice results. Both of these shaders are maybe a bit too complicated for today but um, it's nice to see what's possible. If you see uh, the character going Near the edge, we have a little distortion and a little blur. These rainbow outlines are made with a shader. Like here. Yeah. The sprites flashing purple or changing their color, but not the outline. It's a shader. Yeah, and most of them are quite simple. And really, some of them we will demonstrate. Maybe right, we not. can do the, the sprite flashing, that's pretty simple. Uh, if you guys look at the lines disappearing when the projectiles um, move, these are very simple reveal shaders for this effect. So something like that we are going to, to look at today. That was the big bong. <laughs> <laughs> the big bong is just a sprite uh, in this case. Yeah. So if, uh, 
Can we look at something dying? Which this is a question is. I hoped I would never ask in my life, but... Uh, I think this cloud is about to die here, right? Yep. So the way that this cloud explodes is this shock wave, this little distortion shader, and uh, the death animation is done with this green reading shader. So, now that we have the shameless self-promotion out of our ways. Yep. Yeah, the fire shader is uh, something we are going to make a tutorial about. That's really maybe the most advanced stuff we have made so far, so it could be a bit complicated. So, what is a shader? Actually, what does it offer for you? And to put it simply, we wanted to make it practical today. A shader is your way to get control over the graphic pipeline, over a way your computer draws pixels on your screen. And you can do a shader in a pretty C-like language. So this GLSL, the OpenGL shading language it's called, is like, it, it reads a bit like a subset of C. But uh, since shaders usually aren't that all that complicated, this should not be a hinder. So there are different kinds of shaders that can do different kinds of stuff. You can, for example, move vertices with a vertex shader. So manipulate 3D models or 2D sprites to deform them. We have seen that in a little video, but we have not pointed it out. Whenever something collides, it squishes a bit, and this is actually done with a vertex shader. But we will talk about fragment shaders most of the time today. And uh, there are fragment shaders uh, an equivalent for 3D, but we will stick to 2D just to keep it simple. It will really just be a little entry point. And you can also manipulate particles with a shader, which is quite interesting because you can apply a fragment shader to a particle system to change the appearance of a particle, but you can also control the flight path with a particle shader. Particle shaders also not something we are going to talk about today, but we have quite some tutorials about them if you're interested. So I think we can just go right into that and yeah. start with a very first little shader. Right. So we have this little um, demo project. It's an official Godot demo project for shaders. Apart and from the cats. <laughs> Right, we added the cats, but the Godets are, um, are original. And in Godot, you can shade basically everything that can be drawn. Like every canvas item can have a shader, like a line or a texture rect or a sprite. So let's start with this basic, very, very small cursor. So let's say we, we want to make it flash, which is quite a common thing you need in many combat systems. Imagine yeah. you try to kill this cat whenever you, you should want, but imagine you would want to hurt that cat and you want to give some feedback about this cat suffering. So we could make it by letting this cat flash. Yeah. How would, would we go about that? We need to give it a shader material first. So we open material and add a shader material. And this has a shader. So we can also add a visual shader, but we do it like the pros. <laughs> <laughs> we do it like people that never actually looked into visual shaders and write right. the shader code. Visual shaders are quite helpful, and I would love to be able to show more about that. But yeah, uh, just missing the skill right now. Right, so we we'll start <laughs> with a text-based shader in this uh, OpenGL language. And the first line we have to drop is the shader type. So we just write shader type canvas item. And that just tells the shader what kind of shader it is. Like there's particle shaders or spatial shaders for 3D. And now we add the, the fragment method, which gets run for each render pass of the pixel, for each pixel. So it's a void function, doesn't return anything. 
that's something you basically need to copy exactly. Right. That's a predefined method. You can't change the name or anything. So now we want to flash it. First, we're going to make a shader that does nothing. We just write color, which is the variable you can uh, only write to, and which defines the output color that we actually see. And we set it to the texture, so this is not going to change anything. Well, first we could maybe set it to, I don't know, just black, so you can see what it does. So this would be just the color black. See, every pixel just is black. <laughs> so, um, yeah. To see the texture, we actually have to sample it. And this, uh, we do this using the texture function. And now we want a sampler, which is the source of our, of our texture read. And in this case, we just want the normal sprite texture that's defined here. And we need to give this texture function the UV coordinates at, which we, at where we are sampling the texture. So yeah, UV coordinates are a really interesting thing we should talk about for a while. You can just write UV to access them. And the UV coordinates are basically X and Y coordinates within the space of a texture. So they are always between 0 and 1. And the funny thing is we can actually manipulate them. And if you would maybe like to add a bit um, to this UV coordinates, a vector, or maybe um, a bit of X. Hi, Slumber Studio. We are just playing around with shaders a bit. Then we will see the cat shifts a bit. Yeah. And here we can see some really interesting behaviors because shaders cannot draw where there's nothing to draw. So an, a fragment shader cannot make your graphic larger. That's just not possible because this code is run for every pixel of the sprite. And if there's no pixel, the code just is not run. So if you make this little translation with the UE coordinates, we can shift it to the left, but at some point our sprite runs out. Very interesting also is what happens to the right, because there's just no sprite to read from. And repeating the last line is the behavior that is shown right here. But we can change that if you want and make the, the sprite looping. Maybe this would be fun. So this is quite interesting. It's just an import option right. on the cat sprite. Go to import, on select the file, go to import and make repeat enable. And yeah, it's instantly en uh, repeating. So it's really funny. So there's your first chainer wrapping a demon cat around itself, which is totally what we wanted to do and really useful. Okay, so we can just delete this little UV manipulation. This will be helpful later. Keep it in mind. But we wanted to make a flash. Right. So, Dorothea, how do we make a flash now? <laughs> <laughs> First, we have to define what color we want to flash the sprite. So, to do this... It's green. Okay. <laughs> Why? I like the color, yeah. actually. Okay, okay, okay. Then, then green. So, to do this, we have to add a parameter to the, to the shader. And these parameters are called uniforms. So, what we write here is uniform, and then the data type, in our case a color, which is a vector 4. And we give it a name, like flash color. And to get a nice color field in the editor to um, define the color. We set this. Uh, we give this a hint, like this hint color. So instantly you can see, as soon as the shader is compiled, you can see on the right uh, a shader param appeared, and this shader parameter can be set to a color. So let's 
choose a nice green, right? It's, it's great. I, I love green? it. I love right. this green. <laughs> so that's really cool, Holly. <laughs> well, we, nice. uh, you could learn even more. Yeah. Just stay with us. <laughs> so now we also have a second parameter, technically. How much we want to flash the how much we want to change the color of the sprite. So let's add another uh, parameter, uniform float. Let's call this flash state. And we can also give this a range. Like we would set it um, to a range of between zero to one. Zero means see the cat and one means completely green. So hint range can set this range for the, the editor. And we can also give it a default value. And you can see we now have this very cute little slider to change a property that's, that currently just does nothing. But yeah. there is a nice slider, which is great. It's already fun to pull the slider. Okay. So, <laughs> so depending on the flash state, we now want to override this color with the flash color. So what we do is we mix the color with the flash color and we only use want to access the RGB value, not the alpha value. Oh, I see you did some swizzling. <laughs> what is this funny word about? <laughs> <laughs> swizzling means accessing only parts of vectors and it's super, super useful. Yeah, we, we can just give a little demonstration yeah. of swizzling. Yeah. Just scramble around the colors. Sure. How about BGR? How does it look like? <laughs> so what we did here is just uh, tell the shader to write the RGB co values with the B, then the G, then the R. And you can basically put every vector to every vector. You can just write BBB if you want, if you desire that for, for any reason. And spread the blue to every channel to make it grayscale but based only on the blue. So swizzling is just a fun little syntactic sugar to keep in mind. So go on if you want. Right, so we, now we want to use the mix function, which is basically blending two colors over each other. So we want to uh, mix the color that we already have with flash color. I hope I'm not doing the the you order right. It was whistle more. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the the flash state, which is uh, like the interpolation parameter, and now again RGB. So you can already see it's greener, right? And when we put the flash state to zero, all right, we have the normal sprite, and and on one it's completely green. Isn't so, nice? what's really cool is that you can easily make this an animation. Right. And maybe yes. it would be fun to do that, to make a little hit animation out of that. Just by adding an animation player and animating this property. So, it's a bit interesting how to do that. Right, so you have to click on the node that you want to animate. So you can see the shader parameters right here, but you also have to activate the animation player. You have it active in the in the bottom. Um, so now you see this little these little keys, and you can click on the key for the parameter you want to animate, and this little um, dialog appears, and you just click create, or you can also make a busy curve. But I guess we just make a normal linear uh, interpolation here and now we can I don't know make it start at zero flash um, to to one and go back to zero <laughs> and it's looking like this yeah maybe you can change the color around a bit just for 
for fun and profit. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's basically what uh, all of this is going to be about. This is a feature that is really simple to do if you need it. Mm -hmm. And we saw many game days just starting out, just don't have any clue how to start with such a feature. And it's really simple to do with a shader. And there are, of course, very complicated, very impressive things you can do. But there's a lot of stuff that's just as easy as that. So imagine you only want to flash a part of your graphic. Mm -hmm. Maybe only the outline. OK. Yeah, we can do that. Or maybe everything, but not the outlines. It's, we, we will see what we like more. Okay, so uh, to do this, we have to recognize the outline somehow. And in the case of this first of our sprite, we just can take the darkest color and we have, can say colors with a brightness below a certain threshold get flashed and the others don't. So we already sampled the color, so we can access, access it now. And we can just ask if it's below a certain um, brightness. And the brightness is the sum, right, of, uh, of the three color channels um, divided by three. We can do this. It's not too necessary to and divide it by three because we just can set the threshold. Right. Um, we just have to know this threshold. So if this th is the case, use the flashing, else don't do anything, like keep the color as it is. So as you can see, it's doing nothing. Probably because we got the threshold wrong. Yeah, the, the outline color is likely okay. not an exact black. No. And um, yeah, if we feel like inverting that, uh, maybe maybe we want to invert that. Okay. So this is actually how we do the the <laughs> flashing in our game, because we just found it more readable when flashing the sprite to leave the outline intact, because you can see much easier what the sprite was in that case. And this also was very simple. Yeah. Okay. So, there are quite some things we could add to this, but I'm not sure what is the most fun. Hmm. Maybe we blur it a bit. How about yeah. blurring cats? We can even blur it depending on the flash state. I don't know. We this, could do this sounds stupid and fun. Let's blur the cat whenever it flashes. Okay. So, the simplest way to do blur, blur is to use mid-maps. That's a feature you have to activate when importing. Yep, like here. In this case, it's already enabled. And now you can use another function to sample the texture, which uses the bitmaps. And this is texture LOD for level of detail. And now you have a third parameter, which is the, I don't know, the mid-map level. I guess the level of detail. Yeah. If you use zero, it's not going to change. But if you use the flash state, for example, you can s we'll see that it is blurry. Maybe wa only want to do this on the. Yeah. Maybe leave the color changes out for now. Just to have a blur slider because blurring and flashing just is not very impressive. But having a blur slider, maybe also as a kind of uh, damage feedback. We can blur this more just by multiplying the flash state with, with a number to get it a bit higher. Maybe yeah, just two and play with the slider a bit. The same animation actually still works. Yeah. So we changed our hit animation to something 
much stranger looking. But for some games, this might actually be kind of acceptable. And kind of acceptable is what we are going for today. <laughs> so. Do you want to go to the next chair? I see we have already done these. Maybe we can play with the UVs a bit more. We started. Uh, I explained a bit, but uh, there can be done more. Maybe we should make the cat wave a little. Mm, that, that seems nice here. So to do this, we have to change the UV that we sample from. So let's make another vector too. Call this wave UV. And we want to add time-based. Do we want to make a time-based? Yeah, just start with with a static one. Just make the x uv coordinate dependent on the y uv coordinate bit. Um, just add a bit of y to that. This should already do something funny looking. It's so we lucky. have to use it, of course. Okay. So we can... What can we do with this? Okay, this... This does a sharing effect. <laughs> yeah, it's already... Uh... Kind of nice. Maybe put a little sinus around that. Okay. Like this. Yeah. And, uh, multiply it with maybe 10 or something uh, uh, earlier. <gasps> this is a bit strong. Um, <laughs> so need a little factor here to make it weaker and we can make it more frequent over in. So what is it and why does it do that? What we... <laughs> yeah, that, that's more or less how you would go about implementing something like the earthbound background. Imagine yeah. you can easily animate that also just by adding another uniform that you can animate just like the flash so waving a sprite is just about manipulating the uvs and what we do in this case is taking the y coordinate multiplying it so that it just does not simply run from zero to one but like from zero to ten and put it in a sinus to make it a uh, wobbly value. And we just add a little bit of that to the x coordinate. So we want to be earthbound and we don't want to animate that. So there's another way to just make it continuously wave. And this is by using the time built in. So the time built in is in seconds, I think. And you can use it to animate more or less any property you want from inside the shader. And it's quite easy to manipulate this. So if you want to make it faster or slower, you can just... I love it. <laughs> I'm already feeling you, dizzy here. You can just multiply it with Ooh. a little extra value to make it faster or slower. Do you want to make it faster? Make it very fast. We will so regret this. Oh no! Yeah, it's great, great. You oh. really did well. Okay. Just, uh, we have made a waving cat. So you can imagine you can use exactly the same approach to let it wave in a different direction and so on. Okay. So what can we make 
now. Maybe we leave this cat alone. Okay. I think it has suffered enough. <laughs> yeah, let, let the cat dance and take a new cat out of our huge box of cats we brought along. Again, let's add a shader material and a shader, because that's what we do. And give it a shader type, canvas item. Maybe we should make it a grey cat. Yeah. Like, not all cats are red. red yeah. I Off think. I'm, I'm not too sure, but I, I think okay. not all cats are red. Nate is saying he's not using the sign, but the. I don't know how it's pronounced in English. Tangents or something? Yeah, definitely try that. This oh, no. was something I needed in my life. <laughs> yeah, okay. Maybe put it back to yeah. the yeah, yeah. Okay, this was quite an experience. <laughs> so, how can we make this a grayscale cat? Or just a gray cat? <laughs> so, the basic approach is to get the brightness of a pixel. And this sounds like a simple task to get a brightness. And we can just use the RG and B where you sum them up, take the average and this will be fine for many cases. Uh, maybe you just want to do it sure. while I talk. But in reality, the perceived brightness is unevenly distributed. And there are factors you can look up that you can use to get more more accurate results for a grayscale image. But that's like a philosophically really surprisingly difficult question because it's a question of perception. But uh, simply taking the average is not too yeah. accurate for most people. But for many computational tasks, it's more logical and helpful. So keep in mind there can be some factors if you want. And we can just write this brightness into multiple color channels now. Brightness? No, we set it not only to the R, but on also to... You can do something very fun. You can just use the vector three constructor for a single value, and it will put them in all of the channels. So I don't have to do this; just have to use the original alpha. So if I don't do this, yeah, everything with an alpha not one just looks really weird. So the alpha channel that you can access with that A just keeps the transparency of the pixel. Right. Okay, so we now have made the gray cat. Of course, we can use the approach we have seen before to interpolate between the gray state and the actual colored image to make the cat flash in a... In a no. No. flash to to grayscale, if we want. So yeah, just maybe you can try that just to sure. reinforce what we have already learned and repeat ourselves a bit because you're yeah. so fast at typing. This needs to be put to use, right? And. Just like that, we should have a cat grayness slider, which is just what you need. Also good for uh, a hit animation or a def animation. Oh yeah, that's also a good idea, yeah. Right. Thanks, Nate. You can do this too. Like, take this. 
Oh yeah, you can build a vector 4 with a vector 3 and a float, which is really cool. Yeah, these are really as flexible as they reasonably can be. So, I think we should get rid of this cat. We should dissolve this cat. Yeah. Just to don't leave any traces. Okay. Dissolve, you mean like make it disappear like this one? Exactly. <laughs> okay, but, but great. So, magic trick. We will make a cat disappear. Okay. To do this. Wait, do we want to explain the magic trick? You never explain magic trick. Of course we want to explain the magic trick. That's what right. we are here for. We are really bright. Yeah. So, yeah, the rain just stopped. And that's cool. Okay. So, as you can see with this finished magic trick. No, 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 don't show the magic oh. yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we have this pattern of, of dissolving here, and we do this with a noise texture. You can actually use more or less any texture you want. You can design it by hand, but noise textures are really convenient. So you can just type a bit and I yeah. will explain a bit. So the, the basic approach is just to reference another texture to read the time you should disappear out of, which is kind of mind-bending, but easier to do than you would expect. So we just can put as many textures as we want, as long as we don't, more, don't want more than 16 or something, into the shader with a sampler 2D and add this noise texture, for example, but you can use your Godot icon or whatever if you want. Yeah. And you can spend quite some time optimizing what kind of noise you want, with which this makes this button. really flexible, but we are more or less happy with anything. Okay, so first we have to sample the, uh, the noise. And we can which is in fact only a float, because it's grayscale. So you can sample from the noise texture just like from any other texture, just like we did before. But it's grayscale, so we don't need four values. But we will still get four values. That's why we swizzle, <laughs> as we have learned. And we swizzle away anything but the red channel. You could take every other channel if you want. Let's just set the color to the... Um to the noise, just so we can see the noise. Um, Vector 3 for right. noise one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just a little nicer debugging technique so you can see what you are doing. And we see we kept the alpha from the cat, but changed the RGB to this noise. Yeah. Which is nice if you want a noisy cat outline shape. So maybe you have seen that I've already added another parameter, which is the dissolve state, which you're going to use for this threshold. So if our brightness, which we've already calculated, is higher, oh wait, a little, a little bit confused. No, if the no 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 <laughs> the no, noise. no 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 the noise will. <laughs> it's actually really cool to yeah. put brightness into that also, but maybe we can play around with it later. How are we so light? <laughs> We're glowing. So, let's 
completely gone. Why? Yeah, it's working. Oh, so I see you just did all the work while I was turning off lights. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Remember, these are really easy to animate. And... We can even change the, the noise live when we see the changes. So, if we want to play around with that a bit, it would be totally possible to dissolve bright parts of the image earlier just by weighting them into that little little calculation right there and just add a bit of the brightness to one side. It's whatever you want, really. So, ideally, we would see the bright parts remain in this case. So, if we just flip the effectiveness and subtract it, we can make the bright parts disappear the fastest, which is an effect someone may want. But it's just nice to see how easy this works. Hi, Hi Nora. Okay, but we had this little nice glowing edges. Yeah. How do we do that? Well, we have to give the dissolving a border. So let's say we're not yet at a dissolved state, but we are close to it. Then we want to use another color. Let's also give this a new uniform for this. Uniform vector 4, border color. And there it is. So let's say green. Very nice. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so. <laughs> let's say the noise value is Low dissolved state minus some border thickness, border width, like this. Maybe this. No. Then we set the color RGB to um, the border color, the green RGB. So, how thick is the border? 0 0.1. Okay. But we should see it. So I've made some mistake. Maybe it's on the wrong side. It's basically always like... A, what is a Vorzeichenfehler called? The German <laughs> term is Vorzeichenfehler, which is just great. So, like a mistaken... Sign. Sign, sign mistake is just that just does not flow like a Vorzeichen failure does. So after we fix this little Vorzeichen failure, we can see we have this nice effect, and of course we can combine it with everything we want. We could take a grayscale image for the you don't have to do it, but we could. Mm. Or you could sample from another texture and not just this little color. So. I mean, we could just input a versifier, yes. An another versifier? Does it work? Oh, we can actually dissolve the versifier with another versifier. Oh no. But it will not be too smart of a thing. It's not to very do. smooth. It just has so little. Can we go back to the noise? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. kind of a bit cooler. So, no, noise but there are a lot of possibilities. And you yeah, are not too sure what we should do next. So there are some little things we can do to play around. 
at I think maybe it's time to see if anyone in chat has any questions, any recommendations what we should do now that we are almost have done everything we aim to do and see if we just can give you a, a little bit of extra understanding now. Well, we could look so, at these shaders, for example, like what they did. Yeah, we can do one a little advanced thing, maybe. Maybe this would be cool. Maybe we should do one advanced thing. Let's try some texture scrolling. Okay. Just... Um, Another cat? Ma this? Maybe <laughs> for once, just generate something from scratch. We can generate with a cat, but we will completely ignore the cat. Yeah. Just um, like a texture rect. No, uh, what's it called? A panel? Uh, a color rect, right? Color rect, just some rect. Just some rect. So, hue swapping Nate is very interesting and it's a bit fiddly and a bit too much to just write down like that. So how I would go about implementing hue shift is honestly by googling a um, hue shift shader formula because it's no point in inventing the, re the wheel again. There are really well-optimized shaders out there that you can... Of course, you should try to understand them, but it's not something I personally would type from scratch every time I need it. And uh, with a copy-pasted U-shift formula, you can do it very easily. <laughs> Are still so bright, which is really something I mean, very, very nice. Okay. So maybe the camera is a bit sensitive at the moment. But who would have thought that the sun would start shining? I don't know, man. Yeah, it does not help a lot. We are just very bright today, I think. That just... Okay, so a very helpful technique that we will just show you the very start of is overlapping multiple textures to generate something that looks kind of cool. So we will just start by taking two noise textures because two noise textures are double the fun and we are going to scroll the noise textures with the same technique we used to move the, the waving around oh right i forgot to Now we can add a noise texture. Just let it generate something. Maybe you should take two different ones. Yeah. So if you have the same parameters, you should change the seed in that case. And everything else is kind of irrelevant. So we have to sample both of these, but only the, the brightness again. For now, we just use the UV. And then, what 
can we do with this? Well, um, the fact that it always looks cool is just to multiply those two. And maybe sometimes it's really cool to cut off at a low point, but we can do that later if we desire. So okay, we can see something rather unimpressive, but it will get cooler if we start to scroll these textures. Okay. So we can just add a little vector too to later multiply with the time value. And they are basically the UV coordinate change per frame. So UV coordinates are in the space from zero to one and the frame kind of happens often. Mm -hmm. So these values should be quite small all at this point. And we can just add them to the V coordinates. At this point, it is helpful that the textures can be made seamless very easily. Right. And we should not forget to do that. Because yeah. it would look kind of stupid if you see the borders. But that's okay. If you see any borders, you can just Click Tick seamless. seamless and it's seamless. Oh. And so cool. It's already somewhat nice, but we should just discard every value below a certain threshold. So if this intensity, let's call it intensity. Yeah. Is too small, we just reduce it to zero. So like um, maximum? If it's smaller than uh, yeah, whatever, whatever you want. So there are of this course other behaviors you can do here, but it's just for playing around. And this already is a bit nicer. So we can play around a bit with the different kinds of noise and there are different things you could use that for, but it's more or less what you would do if you want some morphing effects or lights on a water surface. We use quite something similar for multiple purposes actually. Yeah. Like the telegraphs are made in that way. If you you look and uh, the round change animation that we honestly just Sorry. threw out, that, that one is made with the same approach, but we like threw away not only some small values, but also some high values. And the interesting thing is that you can really play around with a lot of different textures. And if you look at that fire, this is also made with texture scrolling, but yeah. on particles and with some more elaborated textures than just um, the simplex noise. So, I think we talked about the things we wanted to talk about. I have one, one more idea, which is the blend mode. Oh, Can sure. That That's really interesting. Blend mode, I think. No. What's it called? So, render mode. Blend add. So you can blend it additively. You can show the other ones too. Yeah. Mix is the normal, I think. Normal blend mode. A sub is also really, it's really, really cool, cool somewhat. Yeah. So like if you want a wobbling, shadowy cloud, whatever, you can do it. So, if you liked what we did today, 
we have quite a few shader tutorials for different kinds of shaders. We have some for fragment shaders and some for vertex shaders and some for particle shaders, which all can do really cool stuff. You can all find that on our channel, if you liked it. And like since a few days, we have a Discord. So if you feel like you want to talk to us for whatever reason, you should want that. You can do on our Discord, which we linked in the description. Um, I don't know. That would be really cool. <laughs> That's cool. It's cool you like that. Okay, guys. I think this stream is officially done. Okay, so... Bye!